Hey, welcome back, everybody. The other day, I dropped a video about this, the Slunas FF1R automated filament joiner. And that was a real quick video, and I probably didn't get into a good enough explanation of what this is and why this, at least for me, is going to be so important. But this was originally a Kickstarter campaign. That Kickstarter campaign just recently ended, and this was sent to me in the mail. Now, most of this had to be 3D printed, but all of the electronics came in a kit, very nicely boxed, with this user manual and um, build instructions. That came a couple months ago, and I've gotten it built here, so we have, this is the joiner portion of it, and over here, we have the spooler portion, that all of our joined filament can be spooled up on that, and there's a clutch built into it to keep tension on that filament. But probably what I should have done was explain that I primarily bought this for, for welding my PET-1 filament together, the stuff that I make. But this could be used for so much more. So here we have the top of it. Let me take this cover off. And it consists of two filament sensors, which are the same types of filament sensors we see on most 3D printers. And then there's two extruders. And then over here we have a heating element. Within that there's some specifically sized PTFE tubing and another metal tube. And then there's a thermistor here and of course our cooling fan. So as we put the filament in over on this side, it'll be fed through. The two ends will come together here and be joined. So what's cool about this is we can also apply different firmware and it can be used for a lot of different types of filaments. Let me show you that in the menu. So here's the home screen for me and this is set up right now for PET1. But if we go to setup here, we have a number of different things that we can alter here. For instance, this button here will allow us to run the spooler forward or backward, whether or not sound is on, there's also a cycle counter here, and that counts the number of times that that PTFE tubing has been used um, where the two ends are joined together. So you get to a certain point, you may want to then replace that PTFE tubing and then zero this back out. And down here is where we can select the different types of filaments. Right now I have PET1, there's PLA, PETG, Here's a generic, and this one can be set up for your own particular filament if you have speci specific settings of how hot you want um, that, that weld to be, how long it needs to be heated and cooled. There's also ABS. Now what's cool about this, this particular firmware here is their generic firmware, but this unit is also Wi-Fi enabled. We go into firmware here, you can see I've just connected to my Wi-Fi here. I'm right now running the Norm version 055 version of the firmware. There's also some firmware set up here specifically for PET1. And I've tried it. Um, within the normal firmware, there are settings also for PET1, so I've just been using that. I do have plans on um, trying some PLA and some other materials as well. Here I can select the Wi-Fi network that I want to connect to. And if I want to change firmware, I can go over here, select which firmware I want. There's a little drop down. And then once I've selected that, I can click update. It'll be downloaded. The firmware will be installed and the machine will be rebooted. All right back on the setup menu here. I'm going to go ahead and select PET1. Right now I'm processing some filament. And I'll show you how this works as a joiner. So let's go back to the home page here. And the first thing we see is what temperature we want that weld to be done at. And I've done a little bit experimenting here with you know, my particular filament, and I've found that the temp of 255 works pretty well for me. So we'll select that. Then you select the amount of cooling that you're going to apply after the weld has been made. I've selected 60 seconds. And then we have the injection menu. Now what that determines is how much overlap there's going to be between the two filaments, how much they're going to be pressed together when that weld is made. Again, with a little bit of experimenting, I've found that this plus two works for me. 
Now, this is the point at which it's telling us to insert the filament down at this right, right end down here. But in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and load up some filament, you know, at least one section of it on my spool. I'm going to get that started down here in this end. Then we'll begin inserting. So the way I'm going to do that here is I'm going to first turn this off. There we go. Now this is set up and I'll show you how I insert that filament there and get that started. Here I have a small spool and I have a section of my PET filament on there held in place with the binder clip. Let's go ahead and put this on the spooler and it's important to note that this knob here, this all runs backwards. It's a left-handed screw so you have to turn it on the opposite way of what you normally would. Once that's snug on there, then we're going to come back over to the unit here. Let's get this turned on and set up. Back at the menu here, I've got my spool started. Here's my free end of the filament. And I've selected my temperature and cool time. And when it first comes up, you're going to see this blue insert um, filament here. In order to start this filament, um, we want to turn this off. There we go. Let's grab that spool. All right, now we have to insert this filament into the unit to the proper place within the, the temperature within the heating portion of it here. And what they've done is in the top of the case, there's a small hole on the side of it here. And you push that filament in there until it bottoms out. Put that in there, bottom out, grab it with your finger here. And then we're gonna have to start it through this extruder to where my fingers meet the side of the extruder. That same measurement. There we go, right where it needs to be. We'll take that binder clip off. All right, now we're ready to insert the other side. We've gotten our filament started over on the left side on the spooler. Um, we're ready to insert the filament on the right side. Before I do, I wanna press this button that says check. And what that's gonna do is once the weld has been made, it's going to eject out this left side and that's going to stop momentarily then I can take a look at it check the weld before I continue now the trick inserting this on this side is making sure that when you put it in the extruder that it grabs because what it's going to do is it's going to go through a sensor find out where it's at and it's going to push those two together in just the right way so you have to load this correctly we're going to press on this put the filament through the sensor it is then there, it's gonna pull itself in. And zoom in a little bit here. There we go, it's heating up. Now that's joining those two ends together. It goes into its cooling cycle. Now in the case of my PET filament here, I've selected a 60 second cooling cycle. Here we're nearing the end of the cooling. It'll beep and then it'll eject that weld. There we go. Right there and it stopped. We'll zoom in here. And there's our completed weld. And just looked at how well that was done. That's three or four millimeters long. And that is a really super strong weld all this filament there's no burrs on it it'll be just under 1.75 millimeters and once this is completely cool i can come back over here to the menu again we'll click on check now what that's going to do is it's going to pull the remainder portion of this filament over here from the right side and it's going to pull it through and it's going to stop in that heating chamber portion ready for the next one to put in. So, you know, this could be used in a lot of different ways. You know, DIY filament like this, or if you have a lot of sample rolls of filament, you could join them all together. Or if you have rolls and rolls of filament that just have a few meters left on them, you could join all that together and put them all on a single spool, run them into your printer without all of the filament out pauses.
So there you have it, the Slunaz FF1R.